Hey there, Alex here. The HTC U11 Plus is the first flagship device released in Singapore this year, kicking things off for 2018. Except it's not really that new. The phone was released in a few countries late last year and the phone is pretty much just an upgraded version of the U11. The most obvious change would be the taller 18x9 display to put it more in line with the competition. I really like the taller screen here, and it's a mostly good looking panel with enough customization options to suit most people's taste. That is as long as you're not using it under bright light. It's still usable, but just a little bit dimmer than I prefer. You also get a few other changes here mostly due to that taller screen, so software navigation buttons and the fingerprint sensor is now at the back instead. All pretty typical stuff. It's nice that HTC has finally caught up with the trend of taller displays, but they are still lacking a little in terms of design though. Due to the thicker bezels, you don't really get that sense of bezellessness that you get on other devices like the Huawei Mate 10 Pro. Physically, it's a bit slimmer than the U11 but longer and thicker, which actually feels quite nice in hand to me. Perhaps as a way to counter criticisms that the U11 has a smallish battery, they went all out and threw in a humongous 3930mAh battery inside. Better battery life is always nice to have, and I could get about a day of heavy use on the U11 Plus pretty handily. Of course, this depends on your usage too. That slimmer profile and flatter sides actually improves the usability of the Edge Sense feature. You know, the one where you squeeze the phone to activate certain features? This time round, you get way more functionality than before. You can activate a shortcuts panel with a calendar view, or customize it to tap or double tap a specific area in other apps. Those are kind of neat, I guess, but nothing I would consider really useful. The way I normally use the phone means that I have to adjust my grip to squeeze the phone properly, so it's not really that convenient to me most of the time. The only exception is perhaps to launch the camera quickly. While we're talking about software, this is HTC Sense UI on top of Android Oreo. HTC's customizations does look pretty okay here, and not too overbearing, but I just can't help but wish for a bigger refresh. It's great that I can now swipe up to assess the app drawer, and some of the minor tweaks are pretty handy, but by and large, this is pretty much the same design language that HTC has been using for years. It's just a minor nitpick from me, and not a deal breaker by any means. The important part, which is the performance, is pretty much spot on, and makes the few bloatware and superfluous features bearable. Anyway, for things like HTC's newsfeed or their not very useful virtual assistant, you can always just turn them off. This level of performance isn't really surprising since it's largely the same generous specifications as the HTC U11, and really most Android flagship devices from 2017, so really not much to say here. It's pretty much the same hardware as the U11 when it comes to the rear camera too, so as expected, the experience is pretty much the same too. It is able to produce great looking images with great dynamic range in pretty much most lighting conditions. The Auto HDR mode here works really well. In low light, sometimes it has the tendency to go for a higher exposure than I think it should, but with a bit of adjustment, it's easy to keep it in check. Video recording is again pretty similar too, so nice stabilization and great audio recording capabilities. If you record a lot of live performances, the 360 degrees audio capture and acoustic focus feature could be useful to you. For me, not so much. Interestingly though, the front camera got a reduction in resolution from 16 megapixel on the U11 to just 8 megapixel on the U11 Plus. I say just, but 8 megapixel is still plenty enough, and image quality seems decent still. What you'll find lacking here are some of the more trendy features, like dual cameras or portrait mode, but those are things that I can probably live without. This is still an astoundingly good camera that I think most people will be happy with. But I do have to say though, it's still not quite as good or as consistent as the Google Pixel 2 in my opinion. To sum it all up, the U11 Plus is definitely a pretty impressive phone. The upgrades over the U11 are significant, from the taller display, bigger battery, to smaller things like a slightly better IP68 rating for water and dust resistance. The design of the phone is still really great, especially that unique translucent option even though it's not available here. You still get that great sounding boom sound speakers,
And if you're not a fan of using wireless earphones, the included USonic earbuds are actually pretty good. If you're thinking about getting a new phone right now, the U11 Plus is definitely worth your consideration. It is a pretty complete package that is just as good or better than competing devices in some areas. But I can't help but think that this is a phone that should have been released early last year, and how the U11 should have been. In 2018, it's just a little bit late to the game. Thanks for watching my review of the HTC U11 Plus. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more reviews to come. Thanks again, and see you guys on the next one.